How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves. This came out March 31st, 2023, and is directed by John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein. This movie stars Chris Pine, Michelle Rodriguez, Justice Smith, uh, Sophia Lills, and Hugh Grant, and is based on the board game by uh, Gary Gygax, I believe. I remember that from Futurama. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, that was a yeah fun cameo there. Uh, but anyway, I, I went into this, I, I guess I should mention first off, my relationship with the game. I, I don't know too terribly much about it. I, I get the gist of it. I've seen some people play it on YouTube, and obviously it was in Stranger Things, and that had, you know, that helped out kind of the resurgence of this game. Uh, so yeah, I get the gist. I know how the game functions, but I don't know all the little parts of it. I've never played it myself. Uh, so yeah, kind of a, just a base level knowledge from my perspective. Uh, so know that when I, I talk about it. But I went into this movie not knowing too terribly much about the world, but I still, after having seen it, I, I thought it was pretty fun. I, I, just to be clear, I didn't think it was the best thing ever. I didn't think it was revolutionary. I don't think it's something you have to, to rush out and see. But, you know, action, fantasy, it stays moving at a pretty quick pace. Chris Pine is really funny. Yeah, it's not the best thing ever, but it's a solid movie, and it's a really fun day at the movies, and I thought about it for a few days after I saw it, and even though, you know, I cover primarily scary movies on this channel, I thought, you know, it's something I've been thinking about. I should probably go ahead and talk about it, you know? Um, anyway, let's talk a little bit about the plot. I'm going to cover the setup, you know, what sets things rolling into motion, uh, but I won't be doing any major spoilers. I'll be avoiding the end bits, but let's talk a little bit about it and analyze it some. Uh, we open up with Chris Pine. His backstory is that he's a harper, which is uh, something like a policeman, and his wife is dead because of his job. Some thieves, uh, some criminals got angry and took it out on his family. Um, after that, he's super depressed. He falls in with a very different crowd and goes from being a harper to a thief, and he is now stealing stuff. Well, one day on one of his jobs, something goes wrong, and him and Michelle Rodriguez get captured, and now he wants out of prison to go see his daughter and hope that she's all right. Well, it is a bit of a backstory, and you know, you get that with fantasy movies a lot, a, a very long prologue. They do help this out by introducing a framing mechanism where it's Chris Pine at a parole board hearing, so he's telling the story and there's a, a few jokes he tells along the way, and that does help lessen the impact of a pretty heavy prologue we're getting here, um, or the waiter, whatever. Uh, but he eventually does bust out of prison, and he starts to look for his old friends, and finds that Hugh Grant's character has made it out quite well after the, uh, after when he got captured, well, Chris Pine got captured, Hugh Grant didn't. Uh, he made it out with the treasure, he made something for himself, and he's the one that's been raising Chris Pine's daughter, and... Unfortunately, it turns out he's secretly still in league with the witch, and Chris Pine and Michelle Rodriguez barely make it out in time, and now that sets the goal into motion. They need to assemble a new crew, break into his castle, save Chris Pine's daughter, and get the treasure. And it's not just the treasure for monetary sake, you see, amongst the various objects in the treasure is a reviving tablet, which Chris Pine wants to use to bring his wife back. So, yeah, your whole family is on the line for this. Um, 
So he goes out, he gets the new crew, and mission starts there. Now, I do want to say, yeah, it does feel a lot like the games. The idea of assembling a crew of different characters with their own backstories, powers, and motivations. You really do get, like, when you see a group of people playing this board game, it really does have that same feel of a party going out on an adventure. They kept the base right there. And the way the game is played, you know, you can tell, like, they have all their items and all their powers, and I can see a board game parallel to that. Uh, but also, just the way you have to think on your feet and find your way out of situations, you know, hey, you used this power earlier, I bet we can put this power in this situation and get this to happen. Or, hey, we need to move this crowd, what if we use that object over there combined with this item that would lure their attention that way and it's a bunch of stuff like that that I can see is how the game basically worked you know and I do like all the different characters here they did a good job of giving them different abilities personalities and backstories you know Chris Pine he's you know funny he drives a lot of the humor of this movie but I really do like that you know He's actually a better leader than you give him credit for, and he's actually a much deeper character than you give him credit for, and it's sort of like this humorous persona that he puts on is kind of masking how deep the character really is, and, and I do like that. I also like Michelle Rodriguez. She's the warrior woman in this, and it's always fun to have an action-heavy hero that's ready to run out into battle. You know great fun character for an action movie but I also do like they set up that she was his first friend after his wife died and you can tell that you know the two of them have a very deep and strong friendship which adds a ton to this movie it's not romantic either it's just you can tell that these two people care a lot for each other care a lot for Chris Pine's daughter and there's a big heart, you know. There are the other two members of the party, but these two are clearly the main characters, and I do like that relationship. Other than that, we get a sorcerer who's not the best sorcerer, and he's still trying to learn to control and better his powers, so you actually get a ton of journey with his character there, learning how he can better himself and not be stuck at this lower level. How can he truly master magic and, you know, get up the, the courage? You know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of plot for, a lot of uh, development for his character. And he worked out really well. And then you also get this lady who's a shapeshifter, whose powers are among the more flashy. And she gets a lot of cool stuff in the sequences, like, hey, I bet we could break into this place if you turned into this animal and she gets a lot of a lot of sequency stuff and a lot of plot stuff S sadly though not too much character stuff and her character has a strong motivation her people are being oppressed by the new government Hugh Grant and like that's a, a big character thing you think she'd have more character moments but She's really more a, a spectacle character, and I wish we got to know her a little better, but I think got a little too sidelined with the spectacle of this character. There's also a romance between her and the sorcerer, which hardly ever comes up and feels a little bit forced, and maybe if we get a sequel to this, they'll flush it out a little better. I, I think the two could work as a couple, but it's just sort of was given so little screen time here that it just was like, oh yeah, we're we're doing this, aren't we? Um, other than that, though, the, the humor, the humor does work in, in this movie. Little jokes and quips and Chris Pine is excellent and it keeps the movie flowing. A lot of people do compare this to the Marvel formula, but I will say it's not as bad as the recent Marvel formula. A lot of people, especially in Thor Love and Thunder, have criticized Marvel for kind of overdoing the humor and losing the, the tension of the movie. And it's not that bad here. It's more early Marvel than what we've gotten from later Marvel. And it does work to add the levity. 
it's how people really talk when they, you know, play the games. They kind of laugh and joke with each other. So it doesn't go too far. Don't worry about that. Although you can definitely tell that it is Marvel influenced. And there's a few lines that are a little too close to Marvel. For example, there's a character that has a few lines where he doesn't get sarcasm. That's a little bit too much like Drax from Guardians. And I do have to say, there's one moment at the end of this movie where they knock off a very iconic Marvel moment. And I'm like, that's, that's a little too close. I, I know what that is. Uh, but other than that, it's fine. Uh, people have also complained about the CGI. And yeah, it's not perfect. This didn't have the hugest budget in the world. And especially, you know, you have to do all the animal transformations. And that's a ton of different models and a ton of different ways to animate them. And there's like a deer that didn't look the best. But that being said, a little cartoony in a lighthearted fantasy movie isn't the worst thing ever. And why I could notice that the CGI wasn't perfect, I don't think it was enough to detract from it too much. I I'm not a CGI nerd. But anyway... I guess what I want to say is, this was a movie I wasn't too super excited for, like I didn't think it would be bad, but again, I'm a horror geek more than a fantasy geek, it wasn't some, and I, you know, I didn't play the game, so it wasn't anything I was super excited for, but I went in, I watched the movie, and when I realized I was thinking about it for a few days after I saw the movie, I'm like, okay, that's a, that's a pretty decent sign, I should probably make a quick video, get my thoughts out there. Like I said, not the biggest, best movie ever. It's nothing you're going to write home about, but it's a fun time at the movies. It's something that, you know, if it came on TV again, or if one of my friends wanted to watch it, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing this movie again. Probably not something I'm going to seek out again myself right away, but I could totally see if I was a fantasy geek, I totally might watch this movie over and over again. So, not great, but good, fun. I thought, I thought it worked. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. If you guys want to see more videos, you can find those here. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again really, really soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.